for we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. Of course, this is from our second reading today, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I just love that image, that image of us being God's handy work. Of course, we know that we're created in his image and in his likeness, that he has created us. Whenever I think of a handiwork, though, I often don't think of creating. I think of maybe fixing as well. Think, of course, of those who have the great gift of being handy around the house or around the rectory, whatever it may be. I am, I am not that handy, by the way. I'm not a handy man. But I always admire people uh, that, that are. And I remember actually when we were doing the, the renovation of the church, I'd often come in and, and see how the contractors were doing and what they were doing and try to learn a couple things. And I learned is the two most important tools they have, I too have, duct tape and WD-40. Um, which actually is true, all right? But I also learned that contractors only want to do big projects. And so we had a lot of small projects that had to get done, and none of the contractors really wanted to do them. It was kind of not below them. It just wasn't financially, you know, smart for them to take them on. And so we found someone who knew someone who knew someone that would help us out a little bit for kind of those smaller projects during the renovation, not only of the church, but also with the school as well. His name was, was Chad. And Chad was a, is, is a great handy man, great person to have around sometimes. Within the renovation, one of the, one of the projects that we wanted to kind of figure out was what to do with the old church doors. Remember the doors that were at the entrance right off of Mill Street here. Uh, now, of course, there's no doors there. Uh, and so the question is, what do we do with those, those doors? And one of the ideas that came about was, let's make them into dining room tables and auction them off. I promptly beetled that one as the pastor. Another idea was, let's put them in the rectory garage and let them sit there and gather dust. Well, five of the doors are still in the rectory garage gathering dust. But the other three doors are actually in the Sacred Heart Library. And actually, there might be an image of that, hopefully, that will come up that we can see what the doors looked like before and what they look like now. Of course, we see the old doors and the old entrance, and we could see that, well, they were there and they were doors, but also we look at the Sacred Heart doors, and now we see they look a little bit different. Now, this is the inside of the doors, but I want to draw your attention to something called the clavos. The clavos are those, those knobs, by the way. And if you can see in the new, not new, but the renovated doors, or refurbished doors, that they kind of pop, that they're gold. Well, before that, they were extremely dark. Actually, I have one of the old ones uh, right, right here. And so we thought, what are we going to do if we put those doors in the Sacred Heart Library and we have these old clavos that kind of look really, really bad, to be honest with you. Once again, I'm not an artist either. I'm not one for style. I think we figured that out over the years, all right? But we just knew it wouldn't really look that, that good. And so Chad, our handiworker, said, you know, Father, I can take care of that. I can go downstairs into the woodworking area that we have, and I can, I can refurbish them. So Chad, how are you going to do that? He goes, well, I'm just going to kind of, you know, not grind them, but kind of use a brush uh, to, to get them down and to look good. So how long is that going to take you, Chad? He goes, I don't know, maybe an hour to do 19 of them. I said, great. That sounds like a great idea. So I was curious how I was going to go because I always want to try to learn stuff, right? So it was a Saturday morning, and I hear the going on. And I thought, I want to go take a look. How is Chad doing? So I go down into the woodworking area, and Chad's over the little, you know, grinder, whatever you want to call it, the brush thing. And I go, Chad, how many you got done so far? 20 minutes. And he goes, about half of one. So are you sure you want to do this? He goes, Father, I, I think it's really important that we get this done so that these doors really pop. So the next three Saturdays, Chad was down there. 
brushing and grinding and polishing all the different clavos. And it was actually an amazing transformation to see all the grime and all the tarnish come off. Even for Chad, I could tell that something was going on. He was really getting into this, and I could see there's almost even like a spiritual thing happening. Well, eventually, Chad finished, of course, and he put them on the doors. And I was, even now when I go in the Sacred Heart Library, I'm just really taken aback at the transformation, especially of the clavos. You know, here's the, the grimy one, all of a sudden to one that actually shines, one that is beautiful, one that is, well, the original creation from 1960. That's when we got those doors. But of course, over the years, what happened? We treated them like a door. That's what they are. They're a door. But the clavos, these are meant to be what? That decorative, to bring dignity to a door. And yet, just happens, right? Instead, it got full of grime and dirt and everything else. And yet, this is what was underneath. I go back to our passage today from Ephesians. And what does it say? For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works. We're created in his image and his likeness. But what happens so often in our life? Well, we get full of dirt. We get full of sin. We start to live even in that darkness. We start to live maybe in that belief that this is who we are compared to who God truly created us to be. What does God want to do? Well, in a certain sense, he wants to be our handy God. He wants to bring us back to our original state. Of course, our original state that we received at baptism, being his sons and daughters. And how does he want to do this? Well, of course, we hear in the gospel to this famous passage from John chapter 3. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world might be saved through him. A God who is what? As we hear in the second reading. A God who is rich in mercy. See, mercy is not only forgiveness. Mercy is also God's help. That we may stay away from that dirt. That we may stay away from that sin. That we may stay away from that darkness. He came into this world to save us. He came into this world to love us and for us to truly live in the way that he has created us. So how do we allow this to happen? Well, we need to let him work on us. What does that look like? Letting God work on us. It's us abandoning ourselves to him and trusting in him that he actually cares about us more than we do and it's letting him be the main worker in our life. So often we think we have to do this. I need to take care of this. I need to battle this. I blah, 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 whatever it may be. And yet God is saying, can I please help? And not only help, can I be God? Abandon yourself to me and I will transform you. It's St. John of the Cross who says, how do we truly gain work in the spiritual life? What's the key to growing in love with God? And he writes this to these beautiful sisters. He writes this, nada, nada, nada. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It may seem like pie in the sky, but what does it actually look like? Lord, I abandon myself to you. And I allow you truly to work on me, to heal me, and to transform me. I allow you to be this handy worker, the one that is greater than a handy worker in this world, one that truly can transform us not only from the outside, 
but from the inside as well. So we come and receive him in the Eucharist, sharing in his divinity, allowing him to work and to transform us and to restore us into who we are called to be, his sons and daughters. So my brothers and sisters today, let us come before the Lord. Let us come before our Savior and allow him to work on us. Why? Because we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them.